Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, we will be discussing the cognitive functions, your mental processes, and how you attain flow through these processes. You might have heard that your personality type uses introverted intuition, or perhaps that your personality type uses extroverted intuition. And these concepts were ironed out by Carl Jung, and later attributed to personality types thanks to the works of Isabella Briggs at the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator. The cognitive functions help explain why people that can seem so similar use such different strategies to solve problems. It makes you realize why some people take such a long time to think about something that to you seems so simple. It helps explain why some people appear so organized and so constrained in how they do something, where for you it's such a free flow and adaptive process. We learned that people with seemingly, seemingly similar personality types could value different mental processes. As we see here, the ENFP using extroverted intuition, where the ESFP uses introverted intuition. So why is it so different? The Myers-Briggs type indicator decided to focus on studying the differences in the mental processes of people with either a judging or a perceiving preference. If your letter in your personality code was a yay, your personality type functions would be completely different from a person with a P preference. Isabella Briggs did this because she was interested in the so-called extroverted and judging personality types. She essentially created a new dichotomy for being proactive or linear or organized or being a perceiving type which is a perceiving rash, flexible, and adaptive personality type. She stated that those with a strong, extroverted, and rational process from Carl Jung's theories would be judgers, where those with a strong perception process would be perceiving types. And after theories like hers, uh, graphs like this became common, citing that INFJs and ESTPs use the similar mental processes, but that they use them to a completely different degree, with uh, introvert intuition as the strongest process of the INFJ, and introvert intuition as the weakest preference uh, for the ESTP. And what I became aware of when I studied the cognitive processes was that the cognitive processes were based on an set of overlapping personality traits. When Carl Jung described what introversion would look like if it had an introverted, top-down, subjective orientation, Isabella Briggs described introverted intuition from having both a subjective and a proactive linear orientation. This meant that uh, intuition and judging became relevant with, uh, for example, predicting the future, prophesizing, or creating or speculating on what was going to happen next. Similarly, Isabella Briggs began discussing extroverted intuition not just from being about objective and extroverted intuition, but also about being about intuition and adaptivity, creativity, and possibility seeking. Because of these changes, a person uh, that had a personality type that was both introverted and proactive or judging oriented, as well as intuitive, would have a strong preference for introverted intuition. Similarly, a person with a strong E and N and N and P process would show strong extroverted intuition. But these changes also meant that she began describing the ENFJ or ENTJ personality types as well as the INFP and INTP personality types as less intuitive than they were. Because the INFPs and INTPs had both strong IN perspectives and strong NP dialogues, they came to identify only to 50% with the extroverted intuitive or the introverted intuitive traits. Similarly, the ENFJ and the ENTJ that had strong speculative processes as well as strong pattern recognizing processes tended to identify less as introvert intuitives because, well, they only shared 50% of its personality traits. 
So when you begin digging a little deeper, you find that uh, the processes are not 8 as we previously thought, but 16. There are the NJs that are gifted at speculations. There are the INs that are gifted at strong, profound perspectives. There are the ENs that are gifted at finding new patterns and new possibilities. And there are the NPs that are gifted with creativity and the ability to see things in multiple different ways. There are the SJs that happen to be gifted at spotting routines and creating new routines and showing discipline. The word IS types that show the strongest awareness of history and lessons and old memories. There were the ES types that showed the strongest perceptions and the strongest awareness of the room and of their nature. There were the SPs that had the strongest awareness of their instincts, how their body felt, what they want, what they needed and what they needed to do to get it. There were the people that showed the strongest feeling judging, the ideological types. There were the people that showed the strongest extroversion and feeling, the impression-oriented types. There were the people that showed the strongest introversion and feeling, the resolution-oriented types. And finally, there were the people that showed the strongest feeling and perceiving, the interpreting types. Eventually, you get down to the thinking types, and you notice that the thinking types are the people that show the highest systematical thinking. The thinking judging types are the most systematical, where the extroverted and thinking types are the most action oriented. And finally, the introverted and thinking types are the most definition and precision oriented. And the thinking and perceiving types are the most diagnostics oriented of the personality types. This means that the INFJ's four top mental processes can all be found in their four-letter code, in the being of being an introvert and intuitive type, in being an intuitive and judging type, in being a feeling and judging type, and in being an introverted and feeling type. I've ended up making a half-finished personality test, uh, which is about 80 questions long, that tests out how much you enjoy and value these processes. And what I found is that you're not necessarily good at all four of these processes, but that you enjoy and you find all of these processes easy to engage in. All of these processes are important for you to find balance, to find energy, to find power, and to find reducing of stress. For example, an extroverted and intuitive type would say that they find it easy, effortless and positive to see connections between different events. Where, for example, an introverted and sensing type would rather say that this process is both difficult and stressful to engage in. An extroverted and sensing type might find this process to be somewhat uh, easy to engage in, but not necessarily positive or fun at all. Where a person that is an introverted and intuitive might find this process difficult to engage in, but generally fun and interesting. The popular old belief was that each personality type used each function to this or that much of an extent. The ENFP always tended to use extrovert intuition the most and introverted sensing the least. But with this new perspective, it instead becomes about how these processes feel to engage in. The ENFP might find the extroverted intuitive process fun and effortless to engage in, but they might still come to favor engaging in intuition and perceiving, or for example in extroversion and feeling, typically because of the desire of one or two particular values. What function you use the most tends to depend on what path in life you are currently on. Some of us value being dominant and decisive and proactive more, where some other personality types value steadiness, calm and peace more. Some personality types value influence, energy and fun more, where some value conscientiousness, strategy and planning more. 
We have all chosen different paths and this tends to lead to a difference in how we manifest our different cognitive functions. The green path is the path of power and that is associated with being more overall dominant, sometimes at the risk of uh, losing control and of losing your center and balance, but also with being conscientious and uh, being and valuing doing something right, doing something strategically and thinking your actions true often associated with sometimes a lack of energy or a lack of influence. The blue path tends to be for people that are conscientious and for people that are overall very steady and balanced people. The yellow path tends to be for people that are overall very balanced and energy and fun loving. The red path tends to be for people that are fun loving like the yellows but also dominant and decisive like the greens. Now the INFJ is typically associated with having highly developed introverted intuition but through this it is only the INFJs on the red path that can truly unlock and use this function to the point where it becomes their dominant key resource in life. These INFJs become so possessed by their vision and by their journey in life and with their idea that it can become like an obsession and where they can pretty much push themselves uh, forward and take huge risks in advancing their vision in reality. Here in the red path INFJ you see a high intuition and a high judging but a weaker introversion and a weaker feeling. Now the INFJs with a stronger introversion and a stronger feeling will be more steady because they have their introversion and more conscientious because they have stronger feeling. And because of this, because of being an introverted and feeling type, these types tend to become highly artistic, skilled artists, skilled counselors, skilled healers. In many ways they offer resolutions and they offer wisdom on and they help us understand reality, humanity and everything without falsehoods, without the uh, fake perspectives. They show us the real version of us, who we really are. Now ENFPs for example are commonly stereotyped as being chaotic or reckless or daredevils, where often in reality an ENFP with a strong extroversion will overall be a quite steady and stable and reliable person. The yellow and the blue ENFPs tend to have the strongest extroversion and the yellow ENFPs separate themselves from the others by also having strong intuition and being highly energetic, fun and easy to be around. It is the yellow ENFPs that are the most supportive of the ENFPs, the most likely to be the sidekicks, the enthusiasts that share us on, that always support us no matter what. Now the green ENFPs on the path of power tend to be the most ambitious. They are often the uh, coaches, the diet experts, they are the reporters, the journalists and they often work themselves pretty hard towards their ambition and they as high feeling types tend to be extremely conscientious and careful about how they go about things. They think before they act and they tend to be very decisive and very determined in advancing their goal. Now, commonly people will stare themselves blindly so much at this function hierarchy and when they see an ENFP with more extrovert intuition or less extrovert intuition, they are very quick to call out, you're not the real ENFP. Most of the time, these kinds of hierarchies are actually wrong and they actually paint a wrongful perspective on how the cognitive functions truly work. Through this, you can develop yourself to use any of the different 16 functions, but some of them are going to be more native to you. And if you're keen on one of these four functions that tend to be the most native to you, you might come to look different from an ENFP that has keened on one of the other three or four functions. The red, green, yellow and blue types roughly correspond to your disc personality type or to the four houses in Harry Potter, Gryffindor, Slytherin, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff. What I want to suggest that we all do next is we stop looking at how often a person uses a certain kind of function or how good they use it but that we instead start looking at what they enjoy and like using and engaging in. 
If a person enjoys and finds a function effortless and easy to engage in, that su should suggest that it is one of their favored four processes. Hopefully, future personality tests will be based on what you enjoy and what you like doing, rather than what you currently do, or what you happen to think you are doing at this very moment. And hopefully this video will make it a lot easier for you to tell which cognitive functions are your strongest and what cognitive functions you value the most. The best way to think about it is your strongest processes are your intelligences, where your strongest functions, your most preferred functions, are your flow functions. Hopefully this will mean that you don't feel as limited by your personality type and that you realize that I can develop any of the different functions that I wish. And that it doesn't change who I am and that uh, no matter how I develop myself, I will always be myself and what I love will always be what I love and what I enjoy doing will always be what I enjoy doing. You can be whoever you want to be, but don't forget to honor the real you. That's all for now. I hope to see you guys in the next video.